I'm sorry, I gotta get this sound right. All right, I got a buddy of mine that I haven't talked to in years. And I get a text after my last video. Hey, what happened to the sound? I was like, what? I don't know, the fucking mic. My fucking haunted microphone. I grew up with, uh, I don't know, you know what, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you about Nintendo games that I always wanted to beat. <laughs> One of them was Faxanadu. I, we didn't know what the fuck was going on in that in this game. We want to talk about innocent times. This was me and my buddy Georgie, the Colombian kid across the street. And uh, <laughs> I used to kick Georgie's ass all the time. We wound up becoming best of friends. But he used to come onto my property and uh, I would go and I would beat him up. I'd go and kick him in the shins as hard as I could. Uh, I'd take him down. I'd beat him up. And Georgie could take it. And t then, you know, then there was a breaking point where he'd go home running and crying. But, uh, yeah, I was a real piece of shit. <laughs> so, uh, you know, anytime he would come over, I'd wind up beating him up. I don't know why. Why is that? But Georgie kept coming back for more. Until one day, uh, I went over to Georgie's house and his father grabbed me. <laughs> his father grabbed me and he, he put me up against the wall on the side of the house. And he said, you ever, in very broken English, by the way, you ever touch my son again, I'll rip your ears off. And oh boy, <laughs> then I ran home crying. Everybody was crying. But uh, I didn't say anything to my parents about that. Because at the time, I was afraid my father would go over there and, like, I don't know, murder the guy. Even though he probably would have just laughed at that now, thinking back at it. And it was a trip going over a Colombian guy's house because his, his mother was Sonia. And Sonia would say, Yes, he. Caca cola? <laughs> Cookies? Me and my sister used to just die laughing at that. Because my sister would go over there too. And uh, you'd go over, you'd see the butter out on the, they'd leave the butter out on the counter. And it was like, you know, you put the butter in the refrigerator. These people would leave the butter out on the counter. It was like a real trip. But anyway, the thing, the thing that was crazy was like around lunchtime, Georgie would get a, f a full meal, like a steak dinner. It was like steak and sometimes like it was like rice and beans and steak and eggs. And like this was lunchtime. And I remember thinking to myself, oh, poor Georgie. Because when I was a kid, man, I ate a fucking bowl of cereal the size of a fucking fish tank in the morning. And then... In the afternoon, have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then at night, you had to choke down steak. Your mother would cook steak or something like that, and you'd have to choke it down. No kid wanted to eat dinner. I had better things to do. So anyway, yeah, so we would sit in, this, in, the, in the basement and play fax anadu with his father. And Georgie's father would sit there and curse. When he, when he would die, he would sit there and curse. <laughs> it was a riot. But, you know, what was it anyhow? Side-scrolling. It was like an RPG. Action platform. I don't know what Facts How to Do was. It was like black and white graphics. I don't know how to explain it. Very, uh, very dull colors. I don't know. 
Hey, you want to talk about a game that I really wanted to beat? I really wanted to beat bad. It was Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, yeah. Listen, it's all the rage to talk about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde now. How bad it is. Ba, ba, ba. Remember, remember the intro music? How did the intro music go? Uh, where the hand would come up to the start select. It was... It's Rygar music. It's Rygar music, and if I think about it, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was a Bandai game, and Rygar was Tecmo. I think the song was right out of Rygar. Anyhow. Yeah, number one, I was so excited about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde when you would start walking through the town. Ding! That was a great little song. You were like bopping through the town. The graphics were off the charts for the time. That's what nobody realizes. The graphics were off the chart. The trees looked amazing. You had these little cottages in the background. For some reason, it reminded me of Night of the Living Dead. <sighs> when they went to that graveyard in the beginning, Ooh, Night of the Living Dead is one of the greatest movies of all time. I'm sorry. When they go to that graveyard, and out of just something so creepy. It's like up, it reminds me of upstate New York. <laughs> Anyhow, you're walking through this town. And the thing that used to get me about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is you had birds trying to shit on you. <laughs> and I would call my mother. And it was also a fountain with a boy like peeing. And I would call my mother. Mom, look at this. Mom, look. I was driving. Listen, between me playing Iron Maiden air guitar and air drums and calling my mother to see in video games, I can't imagine the way. My mother was very sweet. She'd go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, it was probably eye rolls while she's drinking a coffee. She would entertain me, though. I thought I was showing her the greatest things ever. Anyhow. Yeah, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's this fantastic music. And you're jotting through this town. And you know what used to piss me off in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? The sound that the cat would make. <laughs> It would drive me nuts. Anything, anyhow, a lot of things about that game would drive me nuts. Ultimately, the fat lady that, that sings. All right, we get it, Bandai. She used to sing those musical notes would fly out, and they would fly out in these random patterns. And when the note would hit you, it would send you flying back. <laughs> Fly 
flying back. We're not talking about Castlevania flying back. When you would get hit in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, you would get sent back. You'd get sent like a two-thirds, of, a third of the way across the screen. Oh, my God. It was so frustrating, especially when that fucking, when Abraham Lincoln would drop one of those fucking bombs on the floor. <laughs> The cool thing about the bombs going off is when they would, when the bomb would go off, and every video game creator, programmer moving forward should understand this. When the bomb went off, it sh it shut the music down temporarily. Wow, that really made the bomb sound like, like it was important. Same thing with Zola Mercenary. When you would drop your super bomb and eat for the Atari Lynx, it would shut the music down. Oh, yeah, it was spectacular. Anyhow, very solid concept for this game. People from the town would piss you off. Animals taking a shit on you, whatever. And then you would get, turn into Mr. Hyde. And it would flip you into like an alternate dimension. And for some reason, then you would side scroll the other way. And that part of the game wasn't bad. But you would get into these, you would get into this weird thing where you would go back and forth and just steadily lose energy until you were dead. I, I just... Such a weird game. I don't know whether that game was rushed or maybe the programmers were on drugs. I don't know what was going on with that game. But the game was impossible. It was impossible. Another game that I always wanted to beat. Oh. Oh. I don't even know why I didn't think of this one. Oh. Trojan. Oh, this Trojan was a Capcom game. I'm trying to think of that first the first board's music. Trojan, Trojan was an early, early release. What a f yeah, Trojan was an early release. That was uh, that was borderline black box. How about that? And uh, for the time. Graphics, uh, the, graphically, Trojan was something else, man. You were side-scrolling. You had this guy with a sword. And little did everybody know, Trojan kind of followed the, the Super Mario uh, theme. As far as it was a side-scroller and you had these hidden rooms and whatnot, that was like, uh, these were relatively new concepts. You would go into these hidden rooms, and uh, I always remembered, listen, Trojan was the... Uh, had the box, much like the original Mega Man, the Commando. Trojan had the box with all the lasers. You know, like you'd take the picture in, in elementary school, the picture with all the lasers. For me, it was junior high when the lasers came out. I remember I went over my, uh, for some friends of the family, and the two daughters, they had the pictures, um, they were in the living room of, uh, with the lasers. I, who the fuck cares? Ah. I always, I always love when you would take the school picture and they had the log and then the, uh, there was like horses in the background, you know? 
and the log was fake. The log was like cut in half and it had a stand on it. Like the cameraman could like fold up the log and like take it to his, you know, go do his next dead end job. So I remember you'd put your hands on the log like this and you go, okay, now tilt your head and you like smile and now tilt your head. And I was like, who the, f who the fuck takes pictures like that? Even I knew at the time this was horrendous. And I, I guarantee you this asshole probably takes like selfies of himself on Instagram with his head tilted. Got it. You got to tilt your head. What do you go to fucking photography school for that? All right, everybody tilt your head. We want to make sure you look like you got spiral bifida. Anyhow, Trojan. Yeah, Rex and I, Trojan was one of those games that you would pop in after playing a really good game. And then like getting late into the night and you had nothing to do, you popped in Trojan. And we would play, we, we would play Trojan end endlessly. And we got all the way up. I know we got up to the last level. I'm going to have to check this one out. That's the great thing about YouTube, man. All these games that you wish you would have be you would have beat, you can go back, you can go and check them out now. Fuck it. Who is the time to play them now? I'm going to go sit down and play Trojan now. Ah, uh, maybe. And that was that. Uh, that was always that joke, you know. It's Trojan. <laughs> Condoms. <laughs> Trojan. Nineteen eighty six. I bet. Nineteen eighty six. Nineteen eighty seven. Oh yeah. We. You barely. You barely got done unplugging Rob the Robot because you realized what a hunk of shit that was. Then you wore onto games like Trojan. Yeah. There was a guy in there that was like Wolverine. That was another big draw to Trojan. The guy had claws. Like this, like Wolverine. Like, wow, look at those claws. It was something like that could, that could bring you back to a game. Find all the secret rooms. I got news for you. We knew every inch of Trojan all the way up to that last level. I know we got up to the last level. But there were some levels in that game that would kick your ass. And I got news for you. Rex? Rex? could break a Nintendo joystick with one shot. Oh, yeah, and I'm sure, I'm sure he would do that in Trojan. It was so funny. It was so funny to see Rex rage quit at his house because he would take a Nintendo controller, throw it right into a hardwood floor, and the A, and I've seen it, the A and the B button would pop out. Oh, yeah. And we used to roll up little pieces of paper and put it in the A and the B button. But at my house, when Rex would sleep over my house and he would go into one of those rages, I remember he used to throw the joystick into the carpet, like really softly. He'd like go like, like this and at the last minute pull back and it would just like bounce off the carpet. And I'd be looking at him like, hey man, that shit doesn't fly around here. <laughs> oh boy other than that oh Festus Quest listen if you want to talk about Festus Quest I spent nineteen ninety nine on Festus Quest and when I brought it home quite frankly at that point I wasn't expecting much from a 1999 game. I knew it wasn't going to be the greatest in the world. But it was going to be a new game. At that point. And I thought I stepped in something with Festus Quest. I got news for you. Festus Quest is a great game. Who's bashing these games? Number one. You turned on Festus Quest. You got yourself an intro buddy. Oh yeah. The camera would like pan across. There was Uncle Festus. He was like sitting in like a. Some type of 
lounge chair, drinking drinking a drink. Then a UFO would fly out. Who knows? It was sucking people up into the UFO from the city. And then it would go into the the uh, the theme song, which was like this almost like tropical themed like sunsoft, sunsoft music. It was the Adams family uh, like jazzed up. I mean, fantastic. The intro alone, I was like, the graphics were astounding. I got news. This this Festus Quest, number one, it was overhead, I don't know what you call it. What would you call it? It Festus Quest reminded me so much of Blaster Master. Listen, I didn't know game developers from my a asshole hair back then. And for some reason, when I played Festus Quest, I just thought of, of Blaster Master. This is like Blaster Master. Graphically, uh, sound-wise, it had that su- the Sunsoft music. Okay, so wait, wait a second. Tell me why Festus Quest is a bad game. Number one, it was hitting hard in the graphics department. It was hitting hard in the music department. Wise, it doesn't get any better. You had this overhead view. It didn't get stale. It had this overhead view. You were walking through a town. You would enter houses, talk to members of the Adams family. Wednesday, the thing. You talk to Morticia. She gives you a fucking whip. A weapon selection was fantastic. You'd have this gun, and you had all different types of, of weapons you could pick up for it. You had an item sheet, light bulbs when you went down into, into tunnels. You had uh, uh, keys, all these different thing, items that you could use. On paper, this game was rocking. And they must have knew the game, for some reason, they must have thought the game was shit back then, too. Because it would, you could get it at a, dec- at a discounted price almost as soon as it came out. Oh, and you would go into a house, and all of a sudden it would turn into, like, a uh, uh, first-person perspective. On Nintendo, you didn't see anything like that. No, it wasn't until, what, Go- Gogol 13 had a, had some areas like that. Uh, what else had had a 3D perspective like that? That was very innovative. And then you would go down into the, you would go down into these, uh, like the sewers. And until ultimately you would meet up and you would get into this boss fight, which was so reminiscent of Blaster Master. I think this is why I thought, I thought of Blaster Master. You would get into a boss fight, huge boss, great graphics with that black background. And, uh, I remember in Festus Quest, I got stuck on the boss. That had the, he had, it was like a, I don't know, some monster, like a ram, he had like ram horns or something like that, a shield and a sword. And for some reason, I couldn't grasp the, the concept that you couldn't shoot the guy while he had his shield up. You could only shoot him when he would attack, but he would let out this spread shot. 
I don't know. At the time, it was a difficult boss for me. I couldn't get past it. I couldn't get past it. Knowing what I know now, I probably would have been able to to beat it. I just there was there was a few concepts that you just didn't get back then. You know, everybody knows everything now because you watch every goddamn speed run on YouTube. Please. Oh, you beat Castlevania today? I'm not impressed. Go back to 89 and beat it. Then we'll talk. Please. Yeah, everybody's a virtuoso now. Sip of coffee the Festus Quest, huh? Tell me what's bad about that game. It was like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Here's another game that I always wanted to beat. Tell me what was bad. Let's let's look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on paper. Ultra game, number one. Konami. That Konami music. Come on. The graphics were unbelievable. Do you get it? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at the time, it was cutting edge, edge graphics for a home console game. Cutting edge. It didn't get any better. Not only that, you had the side-scrolling action. You had the overhead. They were incorporating every inch of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was like rock steady. It wasn't like Back to the Future where you play it and you're like, how do what, what kind of connection does this have to the movie in any what way whatsoever? This was you had rock steady floating around there, bebop, shredder, splinter. April, what was the name? Everybody was there. Um, Side-scrolling platformer. I understand it had some difficult difficult areas, but it also had another concept. You could use every single one of the Ninja Turtles and select them during uh, during real-time gameplay. Oh, what more do you want? And they all had different uh, attributes. I mean, listen, if Donatello died, hit the power button. It's over, Johnny. Right? Donatello was the man. Oh, yeah. Listen, I know they all probably had a, a, a... They were all probably good at a certain part of the game. I don't know. I didn't get far enough. I got stuck. I got stuck in the overworld where you're driving around in the van, and I hit a dead end somewhere, and I couldn't get through it. I wound up getting through it like weeks later. It took me weeks to figure that out. But then when I figured it out, I was like, oh my God, it's, it's like I started a whole new game. Very exciting. There was no guide. The best thing you had is maybe talking to somebody at school, because I got news of you. Everybody had Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah. It was a huge thing. I remember when the first time I saw a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle graphic novel. This kid Jake brought it in. Jake was like the comic book kid, you know? 
He was like the trench coat comic book kid. And I remember he had a friend that looked like Jackie Gleason. And we would be in shop class. We would be in shop class. Mr. Plascon. You know what Mr. Plascon used to do? He used to come out, tell you what you're going to do for the first, like, fucking 10 minutes of the class. And then he would go in the back behind two of those, you know, those chalkboards that flip like this. He would go behind two of those chalkboards and he had plants set up like a jungle back there. And he had a fucking, he had a fucking, like, a lounge chair. Like a patio chair. Like like Uncle Festa. And he would sit in the chair. And I don't know what he was doing. He was probably getting high back there. And I'm not kidding. Mr. Plascon was the type of guy. He was like Mr. Laid Back. And he would sit in that world of his back there. And the fucking class would go on. It was amazing what teachers got away with. I'm sorry. You can't do that today. I guarantee you can't do that today. I think we had teachers that used to give us a ditto, say copy the ditto, and they would sit there and read the newspaper. Mr. Reese, the football coach. And if you didn't do your homework, which was to copy another fucking ditto, he would take you out in the hallway and punch you in the chest. This stuff happened. This stuff happened. And he was ahead of the football team, and he would dress like Buddy Rich. He had those pants. What are those pants? Those polyester pants with the the where the strap would go across here and you would button it over here and he had a comb over and he would smoke cigars and he would walk through the hallway and he'd go to everybody smile these are the best days of your life oh yeah Mr. Reese Mr. Reese he'd punch you well, forget about it if you were on a football team he'd probably maul you Oh, yeah, Mr. Plascon, he used to put a dollar bill on the desk and take a hammer. he put a dollar bill right here, and he'd hold the hammer. And he'd say, whoever, whoever can take the dollar bill without getting hit with the hammer can keep the dollar. And I got news for you. People tried. People legitimately tried. We had this kid, Jomo Henderson. <laughs> he almost got his hand taken off. He would, when you would go for the dollar bill, he'd be like, bam! And he meant it. And I'm thinking to myself today, what was his exit strategy when he slammed somebody's hand? I don't really think he gave a fuck. He must have knew somebody on the board or something like that. Because Mr. Plascon didn't give a fuck. He'd tell you what you were going to do, what power tools you were going to use, and then he'd disappear. And we'd all be on the bandsaw. I remember Todd would be taking pieces of wood and throwing them into the table saw and they'd go shooting across the room. There was no supervision. Oh, please, the grinders. We was, I was using a grinder. No gloves on. I remember because we had to make like a, a, a tool. I was making a scythe. I thought that would be cool. I'm grinding the blade on the grinder. No gloves. I was, we wore goggles. They were like lab goggles, whatever. I mean, you want to talk about a jerk-off class. Anyhow. Then we had the Black Power art teacher. <laughs> what was his name? Mr. Wilson? Was it Wilson? No, that was Arrested Development. Uh, what was his name? Oh, yeah. He was all against apartheid. And, well, you know, listen, we all are, right? But uh, he didn't want you buying Reebok shoes. He was like failure if you bought Reebok shoes. Because for some reason that supported factories in South South uh, South Africa that supported apartheid. So you couldn't wear fucking Reebok shoes, which were all the fucking rage back then. Hey, this fucking knucklehead. What was his name? Anyway. He was always challenge, challenging you culturally. Like asking you questions and stuff like that. I guess to see where... You, I just want to fucking draw pictures, guy. I don't know. It's like everybody gets in your head these days. I got this guy at work. He's all into conspiracy theories. All right? He's one of these guys. He's telling me, you know, fucking... 
the Earth is flat. Uh, we never landed on the moon. See your dollar bill. Look at the, the the thing on the dollar bill. That's the Knights Templar. Uh, the, the, oh, the first American president was black. I'm like, I'm like, listen, I, I'm I'm installing tile on my in my basement. I don't have time for this. I don't have time to think about it. Who has time to actually sit there and think about these things? I got a fucking wife and kids that are driving me up the wall. The, I don't care about the Knights Templar. I'm being murdered by my family. Slowly. Anyhow. Yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And... If you died, you just lost... Those were your four lives, right? Your four turtles. And if you died, you moved on. But I could... Then after that, what would you... You go up on this dam, right? You're going up on a dam. Then you're, then you're, you're, you're swimming around in the water. You're disarming these bams. So the dam doesn't blow up. It was This was an incredible game. Then you're driving around in the Ninja Turtle van. Oh, yeah. Listen, I wasn't one. Oh, by the way, back to Jake. In shop class, they were throwing like little pieces of wood at my head. That's what they would do. Like, I hated Jake. Because him and, and Jackie Gleason would be throwing pieces of wood at the back of my head in shop class. And finally, we left shop class and I, gr I grabbed Jake and I did one of these. I grabbed him by the shirt and I did like this. This whipping throw into a locker. I threw him right into a locker. I was so pissed off because they kept on throwing. I wasn't an aggressive kid at all. So imagine what it must have took to make me snap like that. They kept on throwing pieces of wood at the back of my head. <laughs> and I'd hear him laughing. And it was, I, I got so steamed. So I wound up throwing Jake into a locker. And he was like, and w once he hit the locker, I'll never forget what he said. He went, he went what are you doing, you freak? <laughs> and then uh you know something after that i i became friends with jake he was like nice to me after that and then we we talked about video games and he had a turbo graphic 16 and i went over his house and he showed me uh oh fuck me now he showed he had a uh, fantasy zone which I never saw before, and I was blown away by how colorful and cartoony it was. And he had, uh... Fuck! What was the other shooter that he had? The other cartoony shooter, uh, uh, uh... Ordine. Ordine. I remember I went over there on my bicycle. Yeah. And then me, me and Phil went over to Jake's house when he got a Super Nintendo and we, we played Super Ghouls and Ghosts, right? And while we're playing Super Ghouls and Ghosts, he had an MTV on. I'm like, I'm in heaven. It's a Super Nintendo, which is like, you couldn't get enough. Like I'd go over Rex's house, we'd play Super Nintendo games, but let's face it, Rex only had a couple of games. So when I heard Jake had a Super Nintendo, we went over Jake's house and we played Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Over and over and over and over again, which was is so crazy hard at the time, but it was such a good game. Uh, and what was playing on it? We had MTV on. I'm like, it was like MTV, Super Nintendo, MTV. I didn't have MTV. Anytime I went over somebody's house, it was like, can we put on MTV? I, I barely had a, a color TV with an antenna on the roof. And it was like MTV, Super Nintendo, MTV, Super Nintendo. I remember the songs. It was Van Halen right now. Ah. Da, 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 da. Listen. Right now. Hang around. Hit, hang, hang, hang. No. Uh, and then Sammy Hagar, let me tell you something right now. All right. There's only one song I can, two songs I can tolerate. From Van Halen with Sammy Hagar. Remember Pound Cake? Pound Cake was a great song. Remember in the beginning? It would have the drill effect. Oh, 
Woo, 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 woo. Bam! Rain. I just love my baby's pound cake. Down home. Down home. And it's one. All right, listen. All right. It's getting out of control in here. No, Pound Cake's a good song. Right Now is a good song. I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. Right Now gave you a little bit of a feeling, right? Like, it's a powerful song. You know, the piano and everything. But, uh, yeah, we're over at Jake's house. And Right Now is playing. This is just to give you a date context. And November Rain. It's the first time I ever saw the video for November Rain. Oh, yeah. Remember Slash comes out? He's in front of the church. It's like helicopter flyby. The hair's flying off. He's got the leather vest on with the hairy chest hanging out. And he busts it. He, like, walks up and busts into the solo. It was, like, white church in the background. Naked Slash. Oh, yeah. Oh, Guns N' Roses was big, man. Was big. Watch November. I don't know. Listen, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, guys. It's a good game. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. I'm here to tell you. And you listen. You just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With a 4K face! I'll see you next time.